Good evening, football fans, and welcome to Belfry High School. This is Ken Hall along with Larry Cecil, Shane Murray on camera for Channel 5, and we're here for the big 2A district matchup between the Belfry Pirates and the Prestonsburg Black Cats. And, uh, Larry, they've had some tremendous battles over the years, these two fine programs, haven't they? Yes, they have, uh, Ken. This is one of the uh, premier uh, games of the year every year in this uh, region in the 2A uh, Kindly rivals the uh, Johnson Central Paintsville game in the Apple Bowl. Everybody's looking forward to this game here every year. Absolutely, and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a more competitive game here tonight than they had, you had last week down at the Apple Bowl. I know you and Charlie were down there, and uh, boy, Johnson Central, they're, they're seven and zero with seven blowouts, haven't they? They're well, they, uh, that, that, game, that, that game was settled within uh, six minutes. I think uh, it was 6.05 on the clock, and it was 22 to nothing in the first quarter, so that was settled pretty quick. But I'm sure we're going to have a better game than that here tonight. Preston's birds coming in on a roll, and, and uh, Belfry's just being Belfry, you know. Right. and. Uh, there's a lot of connections between the two schools is, uh, through the uh, coaching staffs. And, and uh, so uh, I'm sure we're going to have a uh, heck of a uh, high school football game here tonight. I think we will as uh, Prestonsburg really, really struggled last season, had a, had a tough season, unusual season for them. But uh, as uh, and they started out a little slow this year, but they're one of those teams that has been getting better week in and week out. You can see the improvement in them. Got a big win a couple of weeks ago against Sheldon Clark. And I'm sure they're uh, fired up about this game. Of course, it's awful tough to come over here to, to uh, Belfry and, and uh, beat these Pirates. But you're, you're getting a different view tonight, aren't you? You, you been, used to being down on the field, and you've refereed some of these big matchups between these two teams. It's always a great atmosphere, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's super. It's the kind of games that you uh, officiate, uh, uh, you know, hoping that you'll get the chance to uh, participate in. And uh, the atmosphere is great, and, and the kids are fired up, you know, and, and – it's just a uh, just super atmosphere, and just like you said, Prestonburg uh, is on a roll a little bit here at the, the last little bit. I think they're uh, two and zero now in the uh, district, or maybe three and zero. Won their last two uh, district games, so uh, both of these teams coming in undefeated in the district, and the winner of this game tonight uh, quite uh, possibly could be the district champion. Uh, more than likely would be if they pull this off here, but. Uh... Well, I'll tell you, Belfry, uh, we've talked about Pressenburg improving and, and looking better, but uh, Belfry started out strong. They beat an excellent team over here in the Pike County Bowl and Newport Central Catholic, last year's state champion in class single A. And uh, they went up and just, just kept rolling and uh, got a big win there a couple weeks ago over at Pikeville. That's, that's a great rivalry between Belfry and Pikeville. And uh, Pikeville played them really tough. That was a really good ball game. But uh, this, this Belfry team is, uh, like you said, just being Belfry. They've got that uh, Coach Philip Haywood's got his system, uh, primarily runs the ball and, and runs it well. You know what's coming at you, and you still can't stop it. Well, the, the Belfry team, you know, it hits a program, and, and that's what it takes to win in high school football. You have to have a, a football program. Uh, the uh, assistant coaches fielders down into the middle school and, and uh, teaches those kids, and when those kids get up into the high school level, then the, the language as far as the plays and the defenses that they're, they're familiar with, and you don't have to do a lot of teaching as far as that. And uh, I, I know uh, got a friend that helps in the program, and last year they had over 100 kids out in the middle school. So, you know, that, that's what it takes. Oh, that, that, that's phenomenal. And, uh, you know, some of these middle schools struggle to have enough players to have a team, but that's, that's what you need, those great feeder schools. And, uh, those kids, when they get to that high school level, they, they know what the game's all about. That, that really means a lot. That's that's exactly right. And, and uh, when uh, Coach Haywood was in Prestonsburg, it was the same system. You know, it's uh, the his assistant coaches helped in the middle school, and that, that's what it takes to build a program, makes a strong program, and uh, got great community support over here. And, and uh, not only uh, the uh, community, but the businesses around, they get behind the school right. and they come out and it's just a super crowd here tonight and it's like it uh, made no difference who they play. It's like at any time they play at home. Right, and uh, of course on the other side of the ball, uh, a fine program at Prestonsburg too. Like I said, they, they're a program too. They've had great success over the years and uh, Coach John DeRoss has done a great job down there and uh, we, we saw them just a few years ago in the state championship game and, and would have saw them in a couple of more state championships, I feel certain, had they been able to get by this Belfry team. But uh, uh, this has just been, uh, been some great matchups over the years, and hopefully we're going to have a great game here tonight. 
Yeah, Coach Ross is a good friend of mine. He coached both of my kids when they played at uh, Prestonsburg, his first head coach, I mean at uh, Mitchell Lane, uh, his first uh, head coaching job, and uh, got to know John real well, working with him there at the program, and I think if he'd stayed there, he had that program kind of headed in the right direction. Of course, you can't blame him for going back to his home school, and, and he stepped right in down there and, and started an excellent program, and just like you said, before, he's had a slow start first of the season, but uh, Coach Drossett's team's always improves through the year. And at the end of the year, when it comes to playoff time, he's always there and, and has pulled some, some uh, upsets in the playoffs, you know, to advance. Oh, yes, yes, they have. I remember just a couple of years ago over to uh, Breathitt County when Breathitt had that great team with uh, when Jacob Hundley, who's now Pop College quarterback, was uh, was a quarterback over there. And I, I don't know if they may have been undefeated that year, but they were a heavy favorite to win the state championship or to get to the finals. And uh, Coach DeRossi takes the Black Cats over there and pulls off the upset. And, uh, I think we had, we had, I, your son was with me that night, uh, Jimmy Cecil. Yeah, that oldest boy, oh, man. Oldest boy of yours that's, that's <laughs> also a, a referee, but uh, you all are, are related, aren't you? Uh, yes, me and Jim's cousin. Cousins. Yes. But, uh, Jim may be out here tonight. I know Robert Robert Staggs is. and uh, I don't, sure I don't think with Jim's crew. with this crew tonight. I've seen uh, the list uh, earlier of the officials. Uh, we got uh, Bill Greer, Chris Simpson, uh, uh, Robert Marty Gormley and uh, uh, Brian Ratliff, I think, oh, okay. is the back judge tonight. Jimmy's probably wearing a white hat somewhere else tonight, I would imagine. Maybe it's Sheldon Clark. That's a big game down there tonight, the Sheldon Clark and Shelby Valley. That's that's in this same uh, same district here, 2A district, and uh, and uh, that's, a, that's a huge game there. Both those teams, uh, well, I started to say undefeated in the district, but Sheldon Clark got upset two weeks ago by this Prestonsburg team, and uh, – uh, but that boy from Shannon Clark's having a fine year. That's their only loss so far. Well, uh, earlier in the season, a lot of people picked Shannon Clark to uh, <coughs> challenge Belfry for the uh, district title, and nobody's uh, foreseen uh, uh, them losing to Prestonburg except for the Prestonburg except coaching for? staff and the football team, evidently. But uh, that right. was a big win for Coach Drossett and a uh, and just probably a, uh, you know a minor setback for Shannon Clark because they still got to play uh, Belfry and. And uh, if you know if they can knock him uh, off, you know that, that would be a, a tie of three or four teams there for that uh, district uh, lead. And we're ready to get this one underway as Prestonsburg will be kicking it off to Belfry. Seth Moore, number 22, does the kicking back deep for Belfry. Corey Chapman in the middle. He's got uh, Dustin May to his left, and uh, I imagine that's probably Gerald Epling to his right there, number 18. Can't see the number real good. And here's the kick. It's a squib kick. Bouncing along, picked up at the 20 by Epling. He gets up, breaks a tackle at the 28, gets across the 35, the 45, one man downfield to beat, and he cuts him off and finally tripped up. What a return by Gerald Epling all the way down to the Prestonsburg 31-yard line as he takes it 49 yards on the return. Yeah, num number 77, John Blair finally got him down. Uh, Ken had some uh, good blocking. There's a wedge set up on the side, and he made one good cut. Uh, that wedge opened up for him, and he was off to the races. And now free will run their first play from scrimmage. Andrew Elkins, the quarterback, gives it off to Dustin May off the left side, and he gets down to about the 28-yard line, pickup of about three. I'll tell you what, uh, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to see these Belfry Pirates this year, but this uh, this Gerald Epling is uh, is uh, quite a football player that returned that kick. He's 5'7", 146 pounds, and uh, I, I made a comment a couple weeks ago, he may be the best player in the region pound for pound. This guy will hit you on defense. He does a great job on, in all aspects of the game for this Belfry team. And there's May, a quick hitter up the middle, and a nice hole. He gets down close to the... What are they going to say? He About went 28, down. 27. He got, uh, he actually crossed the 25 and evidently went down on his knee there and uh, forward progress carried it forward. So not, not that much of a gain. It's going to leave third and five now for the Pirates. It just, uh, Coach uh, Haywood, he, he'll just keep pounding that ball, pounding that ball, and, and uh, you can see uh, on the sideline uh, he's got players he can move in and out, and, and uh, his uh, – theory is to wear the other team down. 
And here's a pitch back to Ampling over the left side. Gets a nice hole. And he's got the first down as he gets down to the 20-yard line. A couple of seven yards on the play. And boy, some great blocking on the left side of that line. He had a huge hole. Yes, that line uh, uh, kicked out uh, the uh, defensive end and uh, fullback followed him through and, and uh, picked up the linebacker and uh, had a big opening there for seven or eight yards in a first down. Elkins under center, wishbone formation, gives it off to Dustin May up the middle, and he gets a nice gain inside the 15, down to about the 14-yard line, looks like. That's a six-yard pickup on first down for Belfry, and that's what they like to see. Leaves them with a second and four now. That's a good down to call. Uh, it gives you uh, plenty of flexibility to uh, uh, make your play calls, and just like we said before, uh, Coach Haywood, he's he just going to pound that ball between the tackles and uh, wear that defense down, see what he can do with it. Elkins takes his quick snap, hands it off to Dustin May again up the middle, and he's down, may have the first down. He's had to get just inside the 10. I believe he's got I it. I think he's got it. And boy, I tell you, that's uh, one of the hardest runners you'll ever see, Dustin May. He's a uh, load to bring down. Strong kid that runs really hard. He's got four carries in this drive so far for 15 yards, so he, he is carrying the load for him uh, on this first offensive drive for the Belfry Pirates. Dustin is 6'2", 220 pounds, and he's only a junior. Elkins under center. It's third and short. He didn't get the first down. Off the left side, he's got it this time. That's Dustin May again. He gets down to the seven. Uh, Pickup of about three, and it'll be first and goal now for Belfry with nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Ken, that uh, Pressburg defense is just uh, not showing no signs of uh, stopping that run early, which is not a good sign. Of course, you know, you get a couple drives in, then the, the defensive coach can make their adjustments, so we'll, we'll see what uh, Pressburg comes up with. First and goal from the seven. Elkins under center. Pitch back to Epling over the left side. He's hitting the backfield, breaks the tackle, and gets down inside the five. And uh, that's uh, that's at least three or four tackles that Elkins has broken already tonight. Like I said, he's a small kid, but he has a lot of heart and, and plays with, with a lot of heart. Just a gutsy kid, that, uh, a really tough, hard-nosed kid. Well, he gives you a lot of movement uh, when the defensive man comes up. He's uh, turning his hips, you know, and his uh, shoulders and, and uh, spinning, and it's hard to uh, bring down a, a, right. a carrier like that. Wrap him up. Second and goal. Dustin May up the middle. He's going to be stopped short of the goal line. Looks like between the one and two-yard line. Right on the two, it looks like. So it'll be third and goal now from the two. Belfry's kept it on the ground this entire drive. As you know, they will most as of the night. And I'm not <laughs> shocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elkins takes the snap. Dustin May, he gets drilled, and I don't think he got in. Good job up front by the Black Cats. They stop him at the one yard line, looks like. Yeah, they one yard they pickup. Stood that offensive line up, and linebackers feed it through and, and made a good hit and uh, stopped him. Uh, Right on the one, maybe inside the one yard line, it'll be uh, fourth down. So, uh, naturally, uh, Coach Haywood's going to go for it. The ball is inside the one. So, big play coming up here. Fourth and goal. Elkins under center. Wishbone four basin behind him. Gives it off to May. He gets drilled and knocked backwards. He didn't make it. And Prestonsburg will take over. What a goal line stand by the Black Cats. That's a great, great play, uh, Ken, by the middle linebacker. That line, they held their uh, ground. The middle linebacker fed through and stuck him, and uh, then he got some help, and he actually uh, looked like he lost about a half a yard. So that's yeah, a great goal line uh, stand for the Black Cats. Uh, first drive for Belfry. Uh, take it, uh, Black Cats be first and 10 from their own one-yard line. With 6.59 to play in the first quarter, and we've got a whistle. Got a flag. Probably motion on the offense, I believe. It is. And boy, that's a huge penalty, Larry. That's a half a yard. It's a half a yard, but half we're, the distance we're, of the goal. We're, yeah, we're we're the, <laughs> that's right, where that half yard's at. Now now you're uh, starting to drive on your own half yard line. So that's yeah. dangerous territory for the Black Cats. Yes, it is. 
as Bobby Hughes under center. Hands it off to the second man through. That's Lincoln Sloan, and nothing there for him. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage. It looks like it's a no game. Second and ten now for Prestonsburg, but uh, Belfry kept the ball for five minutes on that drive and uh, got all the way down inside the one-yard line but couldn't get it in the end zone. Well, they got down inside that red zone and the uh, Black Cat uh, defense stiffened up and held them out. Hughes under center. Quick handoff to Sloan again and not much there for him. Looked like he might have uh, about two yards. He got, yeah, it looks like closer. Maybe close a to yard. The three there, yard line. Yeah, they're, they're, they've got it uh, third and nine on the scoreboard, so uh, it's going to be uh, third and long, whatever, and, and on the two yard line. Hughes takes it, pitches it back, sweep to the left, and somebody comes up and makes a fine defensive play. I'll see who that was. That's an outside linebacker. I can't pick his number up right now. I think Maybe it's been number eight. eight. I believe it was. Like. Philip Hickman. I think that was Lincoln Sloan again on the call. The ball still at the three, so no gain. It'll be fourth and long now, and Prestonsburg will have to punt it from deep in their own end zone. And let's see, Bobby Hughes, I think, usually does the punting. He's back the back of the end zone. you got to get a good snap here. He's got it, and boots it short and off to the side. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 34, 35 yard line. Looks like closer to the 34. 34 yard line. So uh, that's the 32 34. yard kick. Of course, he was kicking out of his end zone, so uh, you know it give him a little breathing room there. But it's going to be excellent field position for the Pirates uh, on this second drive. Uh, 501 to go in the first quarter, first and 10 on Prestonsburg, 34. Well, they're marking it up oh. now, Ken, oh, to the 30 yard line. Went out of bounds at the 30, huh? Great Just had to get down position. and get their angle on it before they could get where the the, the uh, spot was out. at. Yeah. So Belfry breaks the huddle. 5:01 to play in the first quarter. No score. Andrew Elkins under center. He fakes the handoff. He's back looking to pass. He's got two men down here going for Appling. Touchdown, Belfry. It's a 30-yard touchdown pass from Andrew Elkins to Gerald Appling. Beautiful throw. Eplin set up in the slot. Ken run us what they call a seam pattern. Just went down to hash marks and just run right, uh, right by uh, two uh, Prestonsburg uh, defenders. And the uh, ball was laid in there perfect. Uh, great play. And uh, Belfry's on the scoreboard first. 4.56 to go in the first quarter. And great job by the Pirates. We're just talking about the run, and then they score on the pass. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn <laughs> Ernest kicks the extra point. It's good. 4.56 to play in the first quarter. It's 7 to nothing. Belfry over Prestonsburg. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Intermountain Sports Network. And welcome back to Belfry High School. Four minutes, 56 seconds to play in the first quarter. Belfry's just gone up over top of Prestonsburg by a score of 7 to nothing on a beautiful 30-yard pass from Andrew Wilkins to Gerald Epling. And uh, did uh, when you, we was talking earlier there, Larry, about uh, Belfry just usually pounds it up. They say Elkins just moved into the starting lineup a few weeks ago at quarterback, and uh, uh, he, he's a very accurate passer. Been hearing a lot of good things that they, they are very capable now mixing in the pass, and, boy, that makes them a dangerous team when you can do that play. You're, you're so used to them pounding it, pounding it, and then they can use that play action and, and uh, throw the ball. Makes them hard to defend. Yeah, you, you have to look for the run first, and uh, on the uh, play that they scored, I was looking at Prestonburg's defense, and they had all 11 men within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage, and just running a little seam pattern, got behind them, and, and a great throw, and it resulted in a touchdown. Ernest kicks it back to about the four-yard line. That's Lincoln Sloan returning. He gets up to the 20, and that's about it. He's taken down there. A little, Lincoln, Lincoln little better Sloan field. Been the only only black cat to touch the ball so far, other than Bobby Hughes handing it off to him. And yeah, that's that's a little better field position for the black cats now. You right. know, the the first time they took it over on their uh, one yard line, they got a penalty and moved it back to the half yard line. So uh, it gives them a little more flexibility on making some uh, uh, offensive calls here. 
as Hughes opens up in the shotgun. Now empty backfield. He takes it. He's rolling to the left. Wanting to run with it. He gets a nice block out there. Crosses the 25, and he gets up near the 30, close to a first down. Nice run there by quarterback Bobby Hughes. Yeah, it was just a cold uh, sprint, uh, sprint out by the uh, uh, quarterback, and he got a couple of uh, blocks and uh, turned it into looks like about a nine-yard gain. Well, I think they're going to call for a measurement Close now. Uh, for Kent. a measurement. Robert Staggs calls for the chains to be brought in. You know, Robert's fortunate he's not in chains somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he is, in he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, might, he might be on one of those uh, weekend release programs, you know. Maybe he is. He <laughs> gets out every Friday night to, to yeah. do the ball game. Yeah. But, uh, we, we like to pick on Robert. He can, he can handle it real well. That might be the reason he tries to get everything over so quick so he can get back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a first down. So first and 10, Prestonsburg from their own 30-yard line. Of course, Chuck Hughes informed us years ago that Robert was in his mid to late 60s. and uh, That's been years that's back, That's been too. a few years yeah. back he told us that. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's hoping his age good. He ain't aged much. No, he then. hasn't. Hair looks the same. Yeah, yeah. And we're ready to go now. Bobby Hughes in the shotgun again. He's got one set back with him. And here's the handoff around the right side. Breaks a tackle at the 30. And turns the corner, gets across the 35. That's uh, Setzer. Seth Setzer on the carry. Good run there. Made a five-yard gain. That's, that's a good gain on first down. It's going to bring up second and five from the, uh, it looks like 36 of Prestonsburg. And he's in the shotgun again with an empty backfield this time. Two receivers wide right, one to the left. Long snap count. There goes Setzer in motion. Snap to Hughes. He pump fakes. Now fires it deep down the left side for Lincoln Sloan. And overthrown. Of course, Sloan stopped. Uh, kind of held up there. and uh, He hesitated, but uh, number five, Elkins, had uh, had a good uh, coverage on him. Uh, it's uh, been hard to complete that pass anyway. Uh, Coach Dross had call in the pass to uh, try to loosen that Belford defense up a little bit. But El Elkins, like you said, was right there with him step for step. I think that's why he hesitated. He's trying to break free there. But couldn't do it. Third down and five now. Hughes in the shotgun. Fakes the handoff and tries to reverse field, and he's taken down for a loss. Dustin May gets in the backfield and makes the tackle with an assist from Jonathan Stafford. But a nice play there by Dustin May. You saw... Uh, so no, he was going to try to think run the option there after he faked the handoff to uh, Sloan and saw nothing on that left side, tried to reverse back to the right, and May was already in the backfield and nailed him for a four-yard loss. Well, Bel Belfry's uh, defense uh, had uh, called the uh, for a blitz, and uh, the blitz right into the uh, play, so it, it was a big call. Here's the snap. Hughes to punt it. Gets away a better kick this time. Hits at the 35. Nice roll. My, my. What a kick down to the 11 or 12 yard line, and that was from the 32. Can you add that up real quick, Ken? Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's 39 and 18. That's about 57 yards right there. That's, that's, uh, he'd take that every time, wouldn't he? I believe he'd take that all day, every day. <laughs> yeah, I think I so. I think any coach in the NFL would take that all day, every day. Yes, they would. But, uh, great roll there. Of course, he, he really booted, got, got the leg into it, too. Good kick. Belfry going to take over on their own 12-yard line. 2.43 to go in the first quarter. They're up 7-0. Elkins under center. Wishbone formation behind him. Here's the pitch. And right, hit in the backfield. That's going to be a loss. That's Corey Chapman, his first carry of the night. And great penetration there by the Black Cats. Yes, that defensive line broke through. Uh, the floodgates opened up, looked like, and he came in and dropped him for a four-yard loss. All the way back at the eight-yard line now. Be second, second down 14. 14, yes. You know, Ken, this could uh, be a uh, field position game, so that's that's a, 
a big play for Prestonburg defense. Yes, it is. Hand off up the middle, and probably Dustin May on the carry. Didn't get much. It was May. Spotted at the nine. About a one-yard gain is all he got. So that's going to leave third and 13 now for the Belfry Pirates. It's a little different. Uh, in the play calling when you got that short field and then when you uh, backed up against your own uh, goal line. So Belfry will be a little conservative here and, and run between the tackles and try to pick up a, a couple first downs. Here's the handoff to second man through big hole over the left side. He's hit and taken down. He's probably got the first down. He was Corey Chapman on the carry. Nice run there. He had a big hole over that right side, then broke a couple of tackles out there. And Enough to pick up the first down out at the 22-yard line. There was one of those first downs we was talking about they was trying to pick up. Right. Boy, they got that one on third and long, too. It was third and 13. He picked up 14 yards on the carry. Well, they've been handed off to May up the middle and just uh, uh, over and over, and they faked it to him and, and went to the second back, and, and it was open for him. May's got it this time and gets across the 25, about a two-yard pickup. Close to three. We'll call it three. It'll be second and seven now. Ball we're up to the 26-yard line. Only 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Melfi on top, seven to nothing. That makes eight times that May's carried the ball already this first <laughs> uh, quarter. <laughs> he is a workhorse. Elkins takes it, hands it off to Chapman. Trumbles. He fumbles it, and I think Prestonsburg's got it. They have. Yes, they have. And a big break for the Black Cats. Comes with 22 seconds to go in the first quarter. Ball at the 24-yard line. Belfry's had some problems this season uh, holding on to the football. That was one of the problems they had over at Pockville a couple of weeks ago after put it on the ground several times. Looks like it was a little uh, miscommunication in the exchange from the quarterback to the running back. I don't think the back ever had the ball. Hughes in the shotgun and we've got some kind of movement. It's going to be on the offense. We'll back it up five yards. It'll be first and 15 now for the Black Cats. Ball back at the Belfry 29 yard line. Only 20 seconds now left in the quarter, so let me see one more play in this first quarter. Ken, those uh, penalties, are, they're only five yarders, but they're drive killers. You know, you're starting out first and 10 and uh, made a big uh, defensive play on the 24, and, and before you can run your first play, you're backed up five yards and put in a hole, so it, it's just drive killers. It's, uh, it is. Uh, you can't have that. That's coach killers, too. Gives them, gives them those ulcers. Yes. <laughs> and he fakes the handoff. He's back looking to pass. Had a man out there, but overthrew him. And now they're at the 20. It's 81, isn't it? That was uh, West Woods uh, tied in. Uh. And welcome back to Belfry High School. We're ready to start the second quarter with Prestonsburg facing third and long. It'll be third and 13 from the Belfry 27-yard line after Prestonburg recovered a fumble. Hughes pitches it. Sloan's looking to pass it. Fires it down the middle and short. He wanted to go back to Hughes with it, but he was well covered, so he looked downfield. And uh, who's that intended for? Is that what number is I didn't that? get the number on him, Charlie. I was... Uh... Uh, they was about to sack Hughes, and I, and I was, was number uh, 11. To... Number 11. That's number Chase 11. Martin. And Coach Dross has uh, pulled out one of the flea flickers there coming out of uh, the uh, intermission between the, uh, at the end of the first quarter, and uh, Belfry had it well covered. I'd have to throw a flag on you there if I'd had one, Larry. You called me Charlie just a minute ago there, so. Oh, well, uh, I, I, I guess I deserve one. Flag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I deserve one. Is, is, that, is that unsportsmanlike? Uh, right. Yeah. right. That's unsportsmanlike <laughs> conduct. And there's delay of game on the Black Cats. And, boy, another costly penalty. They're going for it on the fourth and the 13, you know, at this position in the field. Not much else you can do. And then they back themselves up another five yards. This has to be frustrating, Coach DeRossett. Well, they took over uh, on the uh, recovered fumble on the 24. Uh, 
uh, before they run the first play, they had a uh, five-yard procedure penalty, run a couple of plays, now they're getting a delay of game, so they've went backwards. All the way back into 32 now. It's fourth and 18. Hughes in the shotgun, trips to the left. High snap. Oh, he's going to kick it. Good heads-up call if they can keep it. And they do. They're going to down it right at the 10. So uh, good play call there by the Black Cats. That would have been a tough one to make there. Yeah, they uh, – that, that keeps uh, the, your defense honest, keeps everybody pulled up to the line of scrimmage, and then just try to drop one in uh, and, and uh, down it inside the 20, which uh, uh, they've got it looks like just outside the 10, so it worked out uh, well for the Black Cats. Yes, it did. And disguised it well. Had those three receivers out wide to the left, so he, he boots it to the left. They're down there to, to keep it from going in the end zone. So. Right. Yeah, excellent, excellent call. Elkins under center, wishbone formation behind him. And off up the middle to Dustin May. Or was it? No, this is uh, number eight. Epling had it Epling. over here, and he got uh, he lost a yard, by the way, back to the 10. Uh, lost about a half a yard. But, boy, I tell you, it's hard to pick that ball up. They run that, uh, that option so well there. I thought May had it. They, they've always done that. Uh, Ken, when uh, you officiate some of their games, uh, you have to uh, be sure not to blow that quick whistle because sometimes you'd think one have the ball and there's somebody coming by you. With it, so. <laughs> and there is a handoff up the middle this time and nothing there. The Black Cats playing strong up front these last couple of series. Yeah, after that first uh, drive that the uh, Pirates had, they drove it down inside the five-yard line, Prestonburg held and uh, of course, they've had the uh, score on the pass, but uh, uh, since that first drive, uh, Ken, they, they've stiffened up, and the and, uh, Pirates has uh, had a tough time running it. Dustin May got only two yards on that carry, so it's third and nine now. We may see Elkins uh, go to the air again here. He's going to keep it around the left side. He's got all kinds of room, and we got a flag down out here at the 25-yard line. He gets up across the 30. I, I think we're going to have a hold. Holding. I think yeah. so. It is holding on Belfry. Be 10 yards from the spot of the foul and replay the down. That might be the reason he turned that corner so good, uh, Ken. Uh, right, uh, uh, yeah. The defender couldn't get to him. They couldn't get to him. him. Backs it all the way back to the 12, so it's right back where they started. Third and nine. Last two drives, penalties been hurting both teams. Yeah. This will be a big stop for the Black Cats. Uh, you, just like we talked earlier, uh, uh, you know, this game could be well decided on field position. Uh, they've got the uh, Pirates backed up on the 12. They can stop them here and, and uh, could get good field good, position. Good field position, right. Elkins under center. And hands it off over the right side to Chapman, and he gets up across the 15 to about the 18, and that's going to be well short of the first down. I believe uh, fourth down and about four, three or four. So, Belfry will have to kick it away here. 10.05 to play in the first half. Belfry leads it seven to nothing on a 30-yard touchdown pass from Andrew Elkins to Gerald Epley. Uh, dropping back for Prestonsburg uh, for the punt, uh, Ken, is Lincoln Sloan, 33, and number three, Allen uh, Crayon. Here's the kick. Dustin May doing the punting, and, boy, that is a high kick. It hits at the 45, and it's a Belfry player down at about the 42, 41-yard line. So, like you said, Larry, uh, Prestonsburg comes out of this with really good field position, starting to drive at the Belfry 41. Yeah, any time you can take over uh, and uh, start your drive on your opponent's side of the 50-yard line, you know, you, that's that's great field position. And not only uh, this makes two times Prestonburg done that tonight, I think Belfry's done it a couple or three times herself. Right. On, on their scoring drive, they started out on the 20 and, and scored on one play on the pass. So uh, it's definitely a disadvantage for the uh, defense. Yes, it is. Hughes in the shotgun. Got two receivers to his left. Hands it off up the middle and trying to find somewhere to go. Is, is that Sloan? Uh, they wrapped him up so quick, couldn't see his number. No, that's number five. Uh, Setzer, Seth Setzer. And he got a yard down to the 40. It'll be second and nine now for the Black Cats. 
most of these defenses is getting stingy on that run. Uh, Ken, uh, it's just one or two yards, but the thing about it is you just keep pounding and pounding, then not once you're going to pop that uh, 25 or 30 yarder. Hughes awaits the snap from the shotgun. He's got it, swings it out in the left flat to Lincoln Sloan. He's got some blockers out there. He gets down near the 30, could have the first down. He drove him out of bounds there, stops the clock with 9.01 to go in the half. Yeah, let's see where they spot it. I believe, oh, he's got it. He's yeah, down. he's got it. Nose of the ball right on the 30, so it is first and 10, Prestonsburg. My cats with a golden opportunity with this field position to uh, try to even this thing up. Trailing seven to nothing. Hughes under center. And all kinds of confusion. Somehow he breaks away and he's running down the left side inside the 20, the 10. Gone. And he's down to the eight yard line on a busted play. Yes. <laughs> I think that he uh, uh, took the uh, the snap, looked like off the back of his center. I think he fumbled it and went up on his back and he took it and the uh, defensive uh, men run by him and uh, he was just running for his life and, and uh, went out to the left side and, and was wide open. Nobody there and turned it up and made a, a huge game. Heck of a run. Picked up uh, 21 yards down to the nine. It's first and goal now, Prestonsburg. I believe the center snapped the ball unexpectedly there. I don't think the line moved, or I think it. Uh, well, there was some confusion yeah. somewhere. Somebody, else, somebody was wasn't on the right page. Pitch to Sloan around the right side, and he cuts it back, gets down to about the six. That wasn't Sloan. That was Alan Cranin, number three. Number three. I saw the three there, thought it was Sloan. Alan Cranin picks up three yards. Or no, they spotted at the seven. It's two yards, so it'll be second and goal from the seven now. Hughes off the sideline with the play call. Clock winding down here. Eight minutes now to go in the first half. Hughes going to line up in the shotgun. He's got Setzer to his right, Lincoln Sloan to his left. Takes a snap. Keeps it himself, rolling to the left. He pitches it to Setzer, and he's tripped up from behind by Dustin May. Back at the 10-yard line, loss of three yards, and, uh, boy, another fine defensive play there by Dustin May. Yes, they, they hit uh, Hughes just as he pitched it, and uh, he's lucky that there wasn't a fumble. Uh, and uh, uh, when uh, Setzer uh, received the toss, they was right on him. That was that was well defense, the, that option play there. That uh, sure Ken. was. As it'll be third and goal now from the 10, Hughes in the shotgun, two receivers to his left. He's got one back in the backfield with him. That's Setzer. Hughes back, straight back, looking to pass, fires it, and going for Wes Woods in the end zone there, but missed him. He was well covered, though, as uh, Belfry back in the zone defense there, and they had it, had it well covered. Yeah, he was lined up as tight end and was running a little uh, skinny post across the middle, but uh, just like you said, uh, Belfry was right there, had it defensed well, and I think uh, the Black Cats is going to go for a field goal, looks like, uh, Ken. Right, it'll be, uh, should be Seth Moore kicking it. As, uh, Moore's got quite a leg, as uh, if you remember there. Larry, a couple weeks ago, that big upset of Sheldon Clark, he kicked uh, a 39-yarder, I believe it was, to tie the game late in the game. Yes, he did. Into uh, overtime. He's, he's we got a timeout on the field here, uh, Ken. All right, with that, we'll take a break. We're back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports Network. And we're back here at Belfry High School as Seth Moore ready to kick a 21-yard field goal attempt here. Hits up, and it looks good. It's perfect. And Prestonsburg on the scoreboard now. It's 7-3, to three, Belfry leading the Black Cats with 6.56 to play in the first half. And the... Uh, Good drive. They didn't didn't get it in the end zone there, Larry. That's got to got to give uh, Prestonburg a little confidence here, getting some points on the board. Well, Ken, that all started back uh, uh, from the in the first quarter when Prestonburg uh, recovered a Belfry fumble on the 24. Uh, Prestonburg uh, couldn't move the ball. Uh, they they uh, turned the ball over to uh, Belfry, held Belfry, and uh, just as we uh, was talking, they took that drive over on the 40 yard line. Great field position and uh, got down. Uh, inside the 10 and uh, the Belfry uh, defense stiffened up and so uh, forced Pressburg to go to the field goal so uh, they got on the board with uh, 6.56 to go it's 7-3 uh, so uh, I'm sure Coach Drossett was glad to get the points on the boards so they'd rather had a touchdown and uh, and Belfry uh, stiffened up and, and made a good defensive stand so uh, uh, 
uh, both teams is on the board now, and and uh, I think this is going to turn out just the way we expected to start with. Be a good good ball game, and a good one to this point, and uh, big kickoff coming here as uh, Seth Moore ready to boot it. Got some fine return men back there with Corey Chapman, Dustin May, and Gerald Epling. As we saw Epling break a big one on the opening kick of the game, and it's going his way again. Epling takes it at the 15-yard line. He's coming up that right side and gets tripped up at about the 31 yard line. It looked like he had some room there and uh, he didn't see who it was, but somebody able to get in there and uh, get a tackle on him. Yeah, got a couple of blocks and uh, he was making a cut trying to get to the sideline and one of the uh, Black Cats defenders uh, took a dive at him and took his feet out from under him and stopped him. So the Pirates be taking over on their own 31 6.50 to go in the second uh, quarter, up 7-3. to three. As we're ready to go, Elkins takes the snap, hand off over the left side, and Dustin May running hard gets a nice gain out to about the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Call it the 37, pickup of six on the play. That's 10 carries for Mr. May tonight, total of 32 yards. Yes, it'll be second and four now. Elkins under center, wishbone formation behind him. He takes it, gives it off to Chapman over the right side. He's got some room and breaking tackles. He gets across midfield, still on his feet, and he gets down to the Prestonsburg 43-yard line. What a run by Chapman. How many tackles did he break on that run? He must have run through three or four tackles. He just refused to go down. Uh, the Black Cats defense wasn't wrapping up. It was just a hitting him, and he's just a spinning and a turning and uh, had his hand down on the ground one time holding his balance, and he got everything how that he could get, kid. A great run as he picked up 20 yards on the carry. Corey Chapman. Here's handoff up the middle to Mayer. Is that Chapman's got it again? Breaks another tackle, and he's down to the 30 yard line. Another 13 yard pickup. And a couple of players having some words back here, but uh, that's to be expected that, in this game. It is. <laughs> Stag's right there on top of it. And yeah, nobody wants to tackle him now. <laughs> no, they, they, they'd be watching from the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> In a hurry. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Chapman's uh, have picked up 33 yards here the last two uh, carries, uh, Ken, for the Pirates, and has got them down uh, knocking on the door. And off to May this time over the right side, and he gets about three yards, it looks like. Five and a half minutes to go in the first half. Belfry leading Prestonsburg, seven to three. Second down and seven coming up for the Pirates. Chapman's carried the ball five times for 51 yards. That's, that's a pretty that, good average. That's quite an average, isn't it? And boy, what, what runs those two were. He broke some tackles there. Really tough running. Elkins under center. And here's a pitch back to Epling. All kinds of room around the left side, inside the 20, the 10, and it's a touchdown, Belfry. A 27-yard touchdown run for Gerald Epling. Epling has scored both touchdowns for Belfry in the game tonight. Caught a 30-yard pass for the first one and then a 27-yard run. Just keep pounding that ball between the tackles, pounding it, pounding it, and then uh, you get your defense sucked in, and it's just simple little pitch, and and uh, had the, a blocker out in front of him, and uh, I don't think a hand was ever laid on him. I don't think so. Ernest with the kick, it's good, and it's now Belfry 14, Prestonsburg three. We'll just keep it right here. Exactly five minutes to go in the first half, and uh, we got some other games going on around the area tonight. Uh, all right, of course, we mentioned that, that big one, uh, Shelby Valley and uh, Sheldon Clark at 5-1 and one on the season going up against each other down there tonight at Sheldon Clark. Should be a good ball game. Yes, that's a big district game uh, in this uh, 2A. And also we've got uh, Johnson Central. Uh, they're off to a great start this year at, uh, at Greenup County. Well, they, uh, they, uh, always, they always put the uh, home team on the 
left side on these KHSA things. So that game's oh, okay. at Johnson so, so Central. So they're at Johnson Central, okay. Right in there. God bless Greenup County tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> they may, you reckon they called paints before the game? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, you had uh, uh, Pike Central from McGoffin County. That game was last night. Yeah, Pike Central won that big. I think yeah, they did what forty to six, or forty to six, 40 to yeah, or I think so. But uh, they they won that big. That game you you heard last night uh, on the Double X Radio and uh, it's on it's on TV as we speak right now. But we're ready to go here. Belfry will be kicking off. And Glenn Ernest ready to kick it away again. Ernest boots it. And it's taken at the 13-yard line up the right side and getting drilled out at the 25. That was uh, number eight. That's Carmen Maines. And who's number 28? Number 28, Charlie uh, Dotson. He's a... Um uh, 5 nine, one, 76, uh, 176 pound running back, and uh, he was on the kickoff team, and he stopped him abruptly. Oh, he, he, he abruptly <laughs> did. He sure did. That was quite a hit there by Dotson, and uh, Dotson only a sophomore. Black Cats will be taking over on their own 25 uh, yard line, first to 10, uh, 452 to go in the second quarter, down 14 3. Using the shotgun. Quick handoff up the middle to Setzer. And he's running hard, breaking tackles. He gets up across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Good hard running there, a pickup of seven yards on the play. Be second and three now for the Black Cats. Ken uh, Prestonsburg, uh, the last time scored the uh, field goal, drove the ball down the field and uh, turned it back over, uh, kicked it back over to uh, Belfry. And uh, how many times have you seen them answer? Answer, a score after like giving that. up the score. He's yes. Seen that a lot. So we'll see if Prestonsburg uh, can do the same thing here on this drive. Hughes keeps it in. He gets tripped up in the backfield. Fake the handoff to uh, both backs there and then tried to keep it himself, but he got tripped up. Had he been able to get out of that uh, backfield there, he might have had some room. Well, I think I think the back uh, that he uh, faked the ball to kind of got in his way. He, I think he tripped over his feet. It wasn't one of the Belfry Pirates uh, that took him down. It was his own All player. Own player. Yeah. A little jammed up in that backfield. This first half winding down quickly. It's down to 3.42 to play now. As Hughes in the shotgun. Takes it. Back looking to pass. He's got to get rid of it in a hurry and throws it away as uh, sets are well covered out there, and he had to rush coming down on him there. Number 63, Will Sutherland of the Pirates was all over Bobby Hughes. Yeah, he, he just uh, more or less threw that in a way uh, just to keep from uh, taking a loss because he didn't have the time to let his uh, back uh, fielder out of the uh, backfield and get open and uh, – they was uh, the uh, blitz and uh, pressure from the defense was on top of him, so he just threw that away more or less. Had, had to. Self-defense. Yeah. You know, that'd hold up <laughs> any court of law. That was self-defense so there. That was for sure. <laughs> Hughes takes the snap, boots it away. Another nice kick. Hits it and picked up at the 29-yard line there by Corey Chapman. He gets up across the 40 to about the 42, so Belfry with pretty good field position here to start this drive. They've got three minutes, 19 seconds to complete it before halftime. Yeah, it's kind of a short kick. He picked it up on the balance, uh, on the bounce, and uh, moved it up field six or seven yards. Uh, Pirates be taking over as you said on the 42 on their own 42, uh, uh, 319 to go, and uh, they've showed. Uh, Ken, that they can throw the ball, had the one touchdown uh, uh, 30 yards. Right. And so uh, they're, they're uh, definitely uh, have time on the clock to move this ball down and, and put it in the end zone before uh, yes, halftime. Yes, they do. Chapman's faster than you think, Larry. He got 13 yards. That was quick. He took that at the 29. And it's Dustin May getting drilled in the backfield. He lost a yard, maybe two. Or was it? Yeah, that was May. About a two loss yard loss. One, yeah. Second and 12. Yeah, Will Elkins go to the air now. 
I don't I I don't think we're gonna see the uh uh of play. You might see a fake and maybe that pitch out that the uh that mm -hmm. uh, Eplin uh, had the or the Chapman had the big gain on uh, a few minutes ago. Here's just as you say that, dive play to the There line. he goes. I mean, you know, <laughs> hey, typical Coach Haywood. Yeah. <laughs> and it was May again on the carry. Gets up to the 43, almost the 44. We call it a four-yard pickup. It'll be third and eight now. Well, May, he's, uh, he's run the ball 13 times tonight for 36 yards, which is not a big average, but – the scoring plays that uh, Belfry scored on, he set them up by, uh, by right. taking that run in the middle. Right. And here's the pitch. Back to Ampling. A lot of room again. He gets tripped up at midfield and gets forward to about the 47, 48. He's probably got the first down. It's. I think he's going to have it looks like about a half a yard from where they're uh, placing the ball. And like you said, Larry, once again, they were sucked in on that fake handoff up the middle to May. And... Uh, First down. A lot of room around that outside. Yeah, you got you got to honor that dive because uh, you've just as uh, well as I have. You've seen Belfry run that, and run that, and run that two or three yards, and all at once that uh, ball carries 40 or 50 yards down the field. So you got to mm -hmm. honor that. But when you do, it pulls that defense in and it opens that outside up for them. Right. And uh, Ted Dustin May, one of those very capable of breaking a long run. We've seen him break plenty of them over the last couple of years. And who's got the ball? I think it was Chapman over the right side. Yeah, I think that's who it was. Corey Chapman, it was, and no gain. No gain on the play. Good job by the Black Cats on that play. As we're down to 145 to go now. Belfry's got all three timeouts remaining, though, so they've still got plenty of time here to complete this drive. The ball at the Prestonsburg 47, second and 10. Elkins under center. He's back to pass and fires it down the left side. Right He's got a man wide open, and it's caught down there by Corey Chapman. Yes. Big gain down to the 24-yard line, a 23-yard pickup on the pass. Corey Chapman with the big catch. First and 10 now. Minute 20 to play, clock running in the first half. Elkins in the shotgun, fires it over the left side. What a catch out there by That's number 11. Uh, Devin Cohara, it looks Devin like. Devin Cohara, yes. Well, the pass. Uh, pick up a five. He really had to reach for that one, a good catch, but only five-yard pickup, second and five. Elkins back looking at that left side again and throws it a little low. Chapman can't quite pull it off the ground, and it'll be third down and five now. Ken, that's first incompletion. Elson, Elkins thrown tonight. He was 3-3 three, three up to that point, so uh, he's been very effective in the, the passing game the times that they have thrown the ball. Right. I think he had about what, 58 yards on those three completions too, so he's, he's throwing it down the field. On the uh, <clears throat> the uh, catch that uh, Chapman made for 23 yards, uh, he had to stop and, and wait on the pass. Right, if uh, he'd hit him in stride, it would have been another six points for the, right. the Pirates. He had all kinds of room down there. The pass was, uh, wasn't was thrown real well. And Belfry takes their first time out now, so we've got 49 seconds to go. We'll just keep it right here. As it's a big third down play coming up, third and a long five. Yes. Have you uh, seen Belfry uh, this year as far as the uh, their uh, place kicker? Have they got a field goal uh, oh, kicker? Uh, that Glenn, just... Glenn Ernest, yeah, he's been yeah. kicking a couple years here. He's got okay. a good leg, so they're uh, they're getting close to a range where he could probably kick it. Probably could from here. Yeah, it'd be about a 37-yarder if he tried it here. Be interesting to see if that's what they do if they don't pick up this third down, if they give it a shot at the field goal. But, uh, he's got a strong leg. The uh, Black Cats went down and, and kicked the field goal and, and, uh, and kindly uh, got a little momentum on their side, uh, Ken. And, and uh, since that time, uh, Belfry's had the ball two offensive possessions, uh, drove it right down the field and scored on one, and, and they're down uh, threatening again uh, with 49 seconds to go in the uh, first half. So uh, 
Uh, don't know if that field goal was a wake-up call for them or not, but they've kindly uh, taken the game over since then. Yes, they have. And time to go here. Third down and a long five as looks like Elkins is going to line up in the shotgun again. Dustin May in the backfield, and you've got Epling and Chapman in the slots. Trying to set up a screen over the middle and all kinds of blocking. Mays inside the 10, down to the five. Great play call there by the Pirates. Beautiful execution of the play. Uh, the line let the uh, defensive uh, lineman filtered through. Uh, uh, Elkins just uh, flipped the ball to his back and they, he was wide open. As Elkins takes the snap, fires it left side. Great catch, Corey Chapman. Touchdown, Belfry. A five-yard touchdown pass from Elkins to Chapman. Not very often, Ken, you see the Pirates put three touchdowns up in the first half and two of them on the pass. Two of them are passing. That, that <laughs> is uh, not... Not a usual thing for the Pirates, but uh, may see more of that as this uh, young kid Elkins doing a fine job at that quarterback position. Elkins is only a sophomore. And the kick up, and it's good. So it's now 21-3, to Belfry. And, uh, well, like you said, Larry, as uh, Prestonsburg came back, uh, got that field goal, cut the lead to 7-3, to and then Belfry has just taken over the ball game, put two two back-to-back -to -back touchdowns on the board here, and they're well in control now. Uh, it's 21-3 right now, uh, going into halftime, if they can keep the black, uh, black catch from scoring here the, the last 34 seconds. And uh, uh, just like we said, uh, you know, the, they're running the ball in the middle with a little dive, and it's opened up, and, and they've been wide open on those pass plays, and uh, even uh, right. the backs are getting a corner, you know, when they, uh, for the pitch out. So... Coach Ross is going to have to make some adjustments at halftime for that defense uh, uh, to try to co contain the outside uh, against these Pirates. Right. And they need to make some adjustments for the offense. There's only three points on the board here as we're just a few seconds away from halftime. Ernest Street getting ready to kick it off again. Ernest approaches the ball now, boots it away. Good high kick. Back at the 11-yard line, that's Carmen Maines. Cuts up the middle and gets up to the 24 before being taken down, a 13-yard return. Black Cats be taking the ball over just shorter of their own 25 with uh, 28 seconds to go in the second quarter, down 21-3. So, uh, Ken, uh, Coach Drossa, he might just take a knee. And try to get right. this ball uh, where he's in, uh, or he might take a couple shots at it, but because uh, they're lining up in the shotgun, so he can't take a knee out of the shotgun. Got uh, got three receivers out wide to the left. Hughes rolls to the left, looking downfield, fires it deep down the left side, and intended out there for Lincoln Sloan, but he was well covered. Gerald Epling and who else? Number Andrew Elkins back there with him. Second and 10 now with 21 seconds to go in the half. Ball on the 24-yard line of Prestonsburg. Coach Hiller and Howard's Letcher Central team a big game at home tonight, hosting Knox Central. That's a big district game for those two schools. Here's a snap, hand off up the middle, and across the 30 goes who was that? Was that Sloan or Setzer? Uh, Setzer on the carry. And that's probably going to do it as they're not going to call the timeout here as the clock winds down to zero. It's halftime and your score here at the half Belfry 21, Prestonsburg 3. We'll send it back to the station and uh, be back here in a few minutes with some halftime stats and comments on Eastern Kentucky Sports Leader, the Intermountain Sports Network. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll start with the uh, Black Cats of Prestonsburg. Uh, they had a total of uh, 49 yards, Ken's. All they had the, uh, the first half. Uh, Sloan uh, carried the ball four times for four yards. Uh, Hughes uh, ran the ball three times for uh, 29 yards. Uh, Setzer uh, five times for five yards. And uh, Creighton uh, one time for uh, two yards. Uh, 
Hughes was one for three in the passing uh, game uh, for uh, nine yards. So, you know, uh, the uh, field goal that Preston Burt scored was on a, uh, they took the ball over on a short field as we talked right. about that yeah, first right. half. So uh, got down, got a couple of first downs, got down in the uh, field goal range and kicked the field goal. So uh, the Black Cats haven't come up with much offense the first half. Uh, I'm sure Coach Drossett has uh, made some adjustments and we'll see how it plays out the second half. Uh, uh, on the other side of the ball, Belfry uh, just uh, moved the ball up and down the field. Uh, Elkins was uh, five for six in the passing game for 75 yards and two touchdowns. And, you know, we made the comment uh, before the end of the first half, when's the last time uh, Belfry had three scores on the board and two of them was the, through the two passing was, game. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's a long time. Probably uh, since Jonathan Wright was quarterback over here. Yeah, right. Now, they threw the ball a lot when Wright was here. Um, for the uh, Pirates, May had 13 carries for uh, 36 yards, uh, one catch for 17. Eplin uh, carried the ball four times for 39 yards and, uh, and had one touchdown on the ground. And he also caught a touchdown, uh, one pass for 30 yards uh, through the air. Uh, Chapman, uh, six carries for 51 yards. Uh, he had two catches for 29 and a TD. Uh, caught the uh, last uh, uh, touchdown there before the first uh, uh, half ended. and. Uh, Cohara had one catch uh, for uh, five yards. So uh, Belfry's uh, passing game and running game has been clicking uh, uh, pretty good. They had a total of uh, of 207 yards uh, offense the the first half. So it's it's a big descri uh, discrepancy yeah, between the two. To 49. So just yeah, to, just to 207 to 49. That's that's a pretty dominating half. That's pretty dominating. But you never know. Things could turn around in this second half. That's the reason we play two halves, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, an in interesting game uh, last week there, that uh, Middlesboro and Corbin. I don't know if you kept up with that. You see, you see the final score. Middlesboro won it 62-42, to 42, but the game was tied at 42. I mean, they just traded scores back and forth dead even, and then in the last quarter, Middlesboro blew it open. But uh, that was a high-scoring ball game, very interesting. You Sound don't like see two teams stay that close uh, throughout the game and then end up with a 20-point differential. That could have been, uh, I, just like I said, I didn't follow the game. Could have been due to some turnovers. Could have been due to conditioning. Uh, right. <laughs> my, Corbin might have run out of gas after putting all those points right. on the board. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of running up and down the field. That would have been a tough one to officiate. Boy, that would. Uh, can you imagine Staggs at his age having to run the field like they, those guys had to that day? Uh, might, had some, uh, might have had to call some official timeouts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're about ready to go. Glenn Ernest ready to kick it away to the Black Cats. And he boots it to the right side. Bobbled at the 13, picked up, and up the middle. Nice cut there, and out across the 35. That was Alan Cranin on the carry, and a nice run. He gets it back to the 36-yard line. Return of 23 yards. Yeah, he's had a couple of nice returns, uh, uh, Ken. Uh, first half, I think he had one for around 17 or 20 yards, and uh, that was a nice return there, and sets Prestonsburg up uh, first and 10 on their own 36. Yes, it does, as Hughes in the shotgun, two receivers out wide to his right. And he fakes the handoff, keeps it himself around the left side, and gets up to about the 39, pick up a three. It'll be second and seven now for the Black Cats. And uh, I'll tell you, this is a crucial drive for Prestonsburg. Larry, if they've got any hopes of getting back in this game, they need to take this uh, opening drive here and, and uh, put some points on the board because – you never know when you're going to get the ball back when you turn it over to Belfry with that, uh, that strong ground attack. They can eat up a lot of time. Well, when you get it back, uh, the way they've been tonight, you're down another seven. So, uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Hughes under center this time. Sloan in motion. He fakes it to Sloan. Hughes cuts it back up the middle, and he gets popped and stays on his feet somehow. Took another shot and stayed up. Tough young man there. What a couple of licks, and he still picked up a couple of yards. That's a whole lot of hit and a whole lot of running for a two-yard game. Boy, that is, isn't it? That first guy that hit him really popped him. I, I couldn't hardly stay in my chair just watching that hit. <laughs> How did he stay on his feet? <laughs> it, it hurt, hurt up here, didn't hurt it? Hurt up here. So it's third down and five now. 
Hughes going to go under center this time. Man in motion. Fake handoff. He's back to pass. Firing it deep down the left side and just overthrows Lincoln Sloan. Sloan had a couple of steps on his men out there, but Hughes just put too much on it there and overthrew him. Yeah, Sloan set up in the slot and just uh, ran a, uh, again, uh, what to call a seam pattern. And uh, Hughes had uh, his line gave him some time, and he laid the ball out there. It was just a little bit overthrown. Yeah, just a little bit. So Hughes will go back to punt it now on fourth and five. Dustin May, the only return man back. Back around his own 25. Here's the snap. Hughes boots it away, a low kick, taken at the 30 on the run by Mays, up across the 40 in a hurry, and wrapped up there, gets up to about the 42. And that'll be it. It'll be first and 10 Belfry, but great field position to start this drive. That's a dangerous uh, punt, uh, Ken, uh, low, and and, uh, and uh, May tuck it on the run, uh, on the dead run, and, and a lot of times you'll uh, get a, a big run back on that. Freshburg had right. it covered pretty good. It sure did. 10-14 to play in the third quarter. Belfry leading it 21-3. Pirates first possession of the second half. Andrew Elkins under center. Hands it off to Dustin May over the left side, and he gets up to the 46-yard line, pick up of three yards, maybe four, four yards on the play. Prestonsburg's done a pretty good job up front all night on those uh, Dive plays up the middle, but they've been getting killed when they do go to the outside. Yeah, uh, May has basically been the runner that run the inside. He's had 14 carries for 40 yards, but just like you said, you know, he, he sets those other runs, uh, right. uh, outside runs up. May gets it again, and not much there this time. He got two yards up to the 48. It's going to leave a third down and four for the Pirates. And also, uh, again, later in the game, those uh, runs in the middle, uh, one and two, three-yard gains, now you just keep pounding and pounding. They start turning into three and four or five-yard gains. So that defense gets uh, tired. Uh, the Black Cats' first possession, they only kept the ball a minute and 30 seconds and turned it over, and it keeps your defense on the field if you can't move the ball on offense. Right. Elkins takes the snap, and here's the pitch back to Epling around the left side, and he gets – Hit out at midfield. He's going to be a couple yards short this time. That's good pursuit out there. Allen Cranin and 32 for the Black Cats. 32 would be uh, Dalton Taylor. Taylor. Good job out there by Taylor and Cranin to uh, get on the outside there and catch Epley. So it's fourth and two. Looks like Belfry's going to punt it. Ball right on midfield. That's a big stop by the Black Cats uh, making uh, the Pirates uh, punch the ball back over to them the first possession of this half. Right, it's three and out. May back to punt it. He gets it away. Good high kick. Cranin's going to let it bounce. And it takes a bounce for the Black Cats back this way a little bit. The ball will be down at the 23-yard line, so Prestonsburg will take over at their own 23 with eight minutes. 10 seconds to go in the third quarter and Belfry leading it 21 to 3. May gets a lot of height on uh, his punch. Oh, he uh, does. Punch. He yeah, really he does. Gets him up and, and, and pretty nice distance. That was uh, about a 32 yard kick. So, with that uh, uh, hang time on that and 32 yard, that's, that's an excellent kick. Sure is. Hughes under center. Gives it off to Lincoln Sloan, I believe, and there's nothing there for him. He lost yardage on the play. of a yard it looks like it'll be second and 11. I think it was number three uh, Creighton that carried that. Kid. Oh okay Bam -bam. he's three and Sloan's 33 sometimes it's hard to pick that number up in the middle of that pile. Yes it is. Second and 11 he's in the shotgun this time and he fakes handoff he Nice job avoiding the rush. He fires it out here. It's caught out at the 30. Chase Martin on the reception. Boy, good job there by Hughes. He was, uh, had a man bearing down on him. Looked like he's going to get drilled. He sidestepped him and made a nice pass out to Martin. 
pick up uh, seven yards on the play, so that's going to be leave third and four now. Yeah, the defensive end was about to make the sack and uh, back uh, uh, seen him just in time and, and uh, give him a little chip block and just held him off enough and, and uh, give Hughes uh, time to uh, make that completion. Yes. South center already up there ready to snap the ball. Hughes in the shotgun and Pressenberg going to take a timeout here. It's Big third down coming up, third and four with 6.41 to play in the third quarter. It's 21 to three. Belfry will be back in one minute on the Intermountains. Down and four, Hughes takes the snap, rolls out to the left, and oh, where to go, Dustin May wraps him up and takes him down back at the 28, a two-yard loss on the play, and Pressenburg going to be forced to punt it away again as it'll be fourth and six now. That Pirate defense is still up his second half at Pressburg had the ball two times and has failed to pick up a uh, first down. It's been three and out both times, Ken. Three and out, both of them, right. The adjustments they made evident was not working so far, are they? No, they're not. As Bobby Hughes takes the snap, kicks it away, a low line drive, hits at the 42, takes a roll four bell for Prestonsburg down to the 36, and it'll be down right there. So Belfry takes over first and 10 at their own 36 with a 21 to three lead. And uh, I'm just wondering something, Larry. Do you think there's any fans in the stands over at Rockcastle County tonight? They're I'm hosting, sure that they hosting are. Bell County. And uh, boy, you talk about uh, rivalries. That's that's one there, and the two great programs there facing each other tonight. That should be a heck of a ball game. I'd say that the fans are full, and uh, there's probably two or three uh, deep around the fences and climbing trees or wherever right. they can get a peek. I would say so for that one. Elkins hands it off over the right side to Dustin May. He gets wrapped up immediately, and no gain on the play. Again, Coach Haywood's just running that dive, uh, Ken, and you can look for something here uh, to break loose in the middle of <laughs> At any time. Mays carried the ball 16 times, 42 yards. Second and 10 now. Elkins under center. Wishbone formation behind him. He takes it. Hand off to Chapman. He's breaking tackles again. And one man to beat. Crane and slows him up enough for somebody else to take him down. But uh, another great run for Corey Chapman down to the 37-yard line. 26 yards. Boy, Chapman's had quite a night. He's not had a lot of carries, but he's picked up huge chunks of yardage when he has carried. He's had seven carries for 77 yards. That's an average of 11, <laughs> 11 yards every time he tips uh, the ball. So I, I'm sure that medicine. Coach Haywood will take that. Well, I'm sure he will. First and 10 now at the Prestonsburg 37 for the Belfry Pirates. Elkins under center. And there's movement on the right side of the line. It's going to be a bit against Belfry. Back them up to the 42. It'll be first and 15 now. The previous play when Chapman made the big game, uh, Ken, they uh, faked the dive to... Uh, May, just like we said, you know, set it up and get. And Chapman was the second man through. Uh, they uh, gave it to him, and he, he just had a huge hole. Mm -hmm. And if he'd have made a move on one man and, and made that man uh, beat him, it would have been a touchdown. Here's the snap, handoff up the middle to May, and nothing much there. He gets across the 40 down to about the 39, maybe the 38. Gets his usual two or three yards on that carry. Right. May a dangerous runner, though. He's one of those that could break one at any time. And and also, uh, just uh, by the uh, by, uh, Pirates keeping the ball on the ground, uh, we're down to under four minutes in the third quarter and uh, eating that clock away and taking time away from the Black Cats. As it's a play-action pass, hit in the backfield with Elkins. He breaks free. A lot of room around that right side across the 40, the 30, and he's down near the first down marker. Good job there by Elkins, avoiding the rush and uh, seeing an opening and taking advantage of it. 
Great job. And I think he's going to have the first down. It looks pretty close. Uh, referee Roberts uh, Staggs is going to call for the measurement. You think you'd have called that, Chuck, or uh, Ken, if he'd been on the uh, other side of the uh, field? That chain was pretty close to that ball yeah, there, wasn't it? Yeah, that chain was real close, so he can, <laughs> he can handle it now. I think uh, he got it by the nose of the football. So first and 10, Belfry at the 26-yard line of Prestonsburg. Yeah, like you said, Larry, really eating up this clock now. 3.28 to play, and it's running. And, uh, you know, Prestonsburg down uh, three scores here. They may not have three more possessions in this ball game. That's true, and, and defense uh, notice uh, starting to. Uh... And there's Epling now off the left side, and he's going to go. It's another touchdown, Gerald Epling, as he takes it 26 yards this time for the score. What a night Epling's having. Epplin's got uh, six carries for 67 yards, uh, two touchdowns on the ground, got one pass for 30 yards, a touchdown through the air. So he's been the man tonight. Oh, he has, hasn't he? Well, and and all of them, all of his scores have been uh, uh, big plays, a 27-yarder, 26-yarder, and a 30-yarder. And that's, what's, that's what you get from the Pirates. You get that two or three yards, and then the next thing, you know, 30, 40 yards down the field. Ernest kicks it up, and he's got another one. He's four for four tonight. It's now 28 to three. Belfry over Prestonsburg with 3.08 to play in the third quarter, and uh, what, a, what a night it's been. Gerald Epling was the uh, MVP here in the Pike County Bowl in that game against Newport. I think he, I think he was the, uh, maybe in the defensive MVP that night, but uh, had a couple of interceptions and made tremendous tackles, but uh, he's a, uh, Fun kid to watch out here. No bigger than he is and make the plays he does. It's a, it's, it's a pleasure to watch this young man. Well, now, he's the offensive MVP tonight. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> he switched it over tonight. To the so so he, he can get him a trophy on both sides of the ball if they, go, if they give him one for tonight. And, you know, it's just like you talked, 308 to go. Uh, the uh, Black Cats are down uh, three scores and uh, – and uh, the, if they don't get nothing in this possession here, uh, it, it's going to be a long fourth quarter for them. Absolutely. Well, they, that, right now they'd have to get uh, a 25. No, they're, they're four scores down now. They could get three touchdowns and, and three two-point conversions. Yeah, it still would be, be a point down. Yeah, 28-27. So tough hole to come back from and nowhere to go there. That was number 40, uh, Blake Mead, uh, running the ball for the uh, Black Cats and uh, was taken down after a three or four yard gain. All right. Black Cats take the ball over on their own 32 with uh, 3.01 to go in the third quarter, down 28 3. And uh, Ken, just as we uh, said earlier, you know, they uh, desperately need points on this drive. They sure do. And. What's the call? A timeout, timeout Prestonsburg. Prestonsburg. So with 3.01 to play in the third, it's 28-3. to Belfry over Prestonsburg. We'll be back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports Network. As Prestonsburg takes over first and two, <laughs> they're on 31. Hughes fakes the handoff, back looking to pass, fires it down the left side, and nearly picked off there as Devin Cohare came up on the receiver and uh, had a ch chance to pick it off there. I think that was pass was intended for. Uh, I, I couldn't get to, was uh, was it Moore? I'm I, not sure. I, I, I think it was number 22. Uh, Seth Moore's pass was behind him a little bit, and just as you uh, said, Cohar uh, just came a little bit of picking that one off. He sure did. Second and ten. He's in the shotgun this t time. Got twins to the right now. Lincoln Sloan goes in motion right to left. He's straight back looking to pass. Got time. Now he's running out of time. He takes off with it and gets a couple of yards up to the 33. There's tackle there by Philip Hickman. It's going to be third down and eight now for the Black Cats. The Black Cats just uh, went to their uh, passing attack. Uh, Ken tried to get something uh, uh, going this uh, second half. Uh, this uh, what third time they've had the ball and, and they've right. uh, not picked up uh, the first first down so uh, 
the offense has been uh, completely stymied here by the uh, Belfry Pirates. Yes, it has. He's in the shotgun, takes it. Fakes the two backs. Now he's looking to pass, and he's in trouble. Hickman takes him down. Philip Hickman with the quarterback sack. Back at the 27-yard line. Hughes was lucky to hang on that when he was just getting ready to throw it and had felt the pressure and pulled it down, and uh, I don't want to see how he held on to it. Well, you? I don't either. He got, <laughs> got hit there. But, yes, he did. Now, now Hughes is going to have to back up and punt it as it's fourth and about 16, it looks like. So. Fourth and 15. And back deep, Corey Chapman and Dustin May this time. Hughes takes it, boots it, another line drive. May's going to let it roll, and it takes a nice roll for Prestonsburg all the way down to the 22-yard line, 21-yard line. So very effective kick there by Bobby Hughes. 41-yard uh, kick, uh, got a good roll on it. Uh, was no use for May to try to pick that one up with the big lead to just uh, let it roll dead and uh, take the ball over uh, on uh, what's at the 26-yard line or 21-yard line. 117 to go in the third quarter up 28-3. to three. That was actually a, about a 51-yard kick. Larry, was it 51? They, they, they were, you know, he got sacked back at the 27. That's 23 yards and 29, about 52 I believe, yards. I believe that makes uh, two times tonight he's had a 50-yard kick. Yeah, it does. It? Here's Chapman around the right side, taking the pitch, breaks a tackle, stays on his feet somehow, but he stepped out of bounds. Or that could have been six more, possibly. Boy, I'll tell you, Chapman has been tough to bring down tonight. Larry. Man, i tell you, he's quick. Uh, he gets yes, that he ball, is. and uh, he knows where he's headed, and that's straight to the end zone on the other <laughs> end, and he gets there in a hurry. Absolutely. That's uh, – Eight carries for 90 yards, so uh, he's getting close to that 100-yard uh, mark uh, in uh, rushing tonight. And only eight carries. And eight carries. Robert Staggs needs a break. He stops the clock here, <laughs> calls timeout. <laughs> See what this is about. Talking to the head linesman. See what's what's going on here. What could have happened, uh, Ken, was they might have uh, not stopped the clock when they should have when they stepped out of bounds, maybe. Uh, oh, okay. I, I see the, uh, the line judge there. is coming over and talking to one of the Belfry uh, coaches with the uh, headphone on to, I guess, tell them to put time back time on the back clock. On. Yeah. yeah, that's evidently what it was. 105. First and 10 now, Belfry at their own 35-yard line. Elkins under center. And off straight up the middle to May, and he's hard to bring down this time. Gets up across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Six-yard pickup. It'll be second and four now for the Pirates as the third quarter just about over, down now to 50 seconds. And that's one of the uh, two or three-yard uh, runs that was uh, May was gaining in the first half, starting to turn into five and six yards, uh, Ken, just like we uh, right. spoke earlier. You know, the Black Cats defense been on the field for a long time this second half. Yes, they have. And May gets it again, and another huge chunk of yardage as he gets up to the 47-yard line. Pick up of uh, six more yards. So he's got 12 yards on these last two carries. It makes 57 yards for May on 19 carries. He's he's been the uh, workhorse uh, as far as the uh, number of carries. He's he's not the uh, top yardage man, but he has uh, uh, made those other plays work by, by taking that uh, ball and running it in the middle as tough as he's running. And Elkins lines up under center. Pitch out to Corey Chapman around the right side. And he gets down to the 45 as the clock expires for the third quarter. Your score at the end of three, Belfry 28, Prestonsburg 3. We'll be back in one minute on Eastern Kentucky Sports Leader, the Intermountain Sports Network. Fans, we're back here at the uh, Belfry Pipes uh, football field. 
on Pond Creek, uh, Prestonsburg Black Cats and Belfry uh, playing tonight. Uh, Ken and uh, going into the fourth quarter, the Pirates has been dominating this game since uh, the uh, second quarter. It's uh, 28 to three. They've got the ball in their own 46, uh, second and one, and uh, Black Cats haven't shown any sign of stopping them this second half. No, they haven't. Elkins under center. Fakes the handoff. He gets hit as he releases it. Epling almost came up with it, but it did hit the ground incomplete as uh, number 77 there, the Black Cats drilled Andrew Elkins. Let's see who that is. 77 is Jonathan Blair. So it's third down now and two yards to go. A short two. Elkins under center. Hampling in motion. Hand off to Dustin May over the left side, and it's going to be close. Just depends on the spot. It's going to be fourth down. Yep, about a half a yard short. That's Marty Gormley playing linebacker out there, ain't you? That middle of the field. Yeah, that's Marty. Yeah. He, he still looks like a middle linebacker, doesn't he? Uh, uh, Marty is an uh, excellent <laughs> official, keeps he himself sure in good is. shape, and he's a super guy. Yeah, he is. He's, this is a fine crew out here tonight. Hand off over the left side, and he got the first down. That's Dustin May, I'm sure. That's who it was. 21 carries for 59 yards. He's getting them one and two yards at a time. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have to have 50 carries to make that 100-yard mark. He is at, this, at this pace. But, yeah. uh, well, I tell you, he's had a heck of a game on defense. Been in on a lot of big plays defensively. Yes, he's been one of the main players for the uh, Pirates tonight, and uh, we've not mentioned it, but uh, we've got to give accolades to that offensive line uh, uh, Ken, because uh, they've uh, done some excellent blocking tonight and, and uh, opened some big holes up for their running backs. And Chapman's got it, and he gets pounded on there. He No gain on the play. But, uh, thanks to Randy White over here, just informing Dustin May, he's got two quarterback sacks tonight. Uh, he's been in on a lot of fine defensive plays. So. Well, he, he's a very uh, versatile player. He uh, handles the... Uh, Kickoff uh, returns on the punt and the uh, kickoff team. He uh, plays he's, defense, and just like you said. The ball. Yeah, and and that's right. He even punts the ball, so uh, he'll he'll rest well tonight. I say he will. <laughs> <laughs> it's second and ten as Elkins under center pitches it out to Chapman around the right side, and he gets wrapped up, taken out of bounds, and about the forty-one pick up of a couple of yards. But the Black Cats defense kind of stiffened up a little bit uh, on, uh, since the uh, start of the uh, fourth quarter and uh, has not give up much uh, so far, uh, Ken. No, they haven't. But they've sure struggled offensively since uh, this was quite a ball game for the first minute and, and then our first quarter and then about four minutes of that second quarter. I think it was around the eight-minute mark when Prestonburg kicked that field goal to cut it to seven to three and looked like we were going to have quite a game on our hands. But uh, Will Belfry has dominated since that point. Elkins back, fires it out in the left flat too high for Corey Chapman, overthrew him. And that's going to bring up fourth and long now. Looks like May's going to punt it. We don't have the uh, stats as far as first downs. Uh, I was trying to remember back, uh, but after the Black Cats kicked the field goal, they might only had uh, one or two first downs since then in the game. Yeah, that's, that's uh, right now uh, total uh, yardage they're they're less than a hundred yards for the game. Uh, uh, with 9:56 left in the ball game, Dustin May boots it away. Another really good high kick, fair catch call for by Lincoln Sloan takes it at the 13. So Prestonsburg black backed up to their own 13-yard line now. 9.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, black Cats will be taking over on their own uh, 13, down 28-3, uh, Ken. So uh, uh, things are starting to look a little bleak for the Black uh, Black Cats, but uh, 
they desperately need to make a long drive uh, and put some uh, points on the board, and they got to do it quickly. Yes, they do. And Hughes lines up under center. He's back looking to pass. And a lot of pressure on him again. He takes off. He's going to be sacked for about a one-yard loss. Is that uh, number 51 got the sack? Number 51 would be Randy Webb. Yeah, Randy, the, one of the change numbers here. We had him at 37. They think the uh, young ladies that informed us earlier there's been a change. So. Yeah, uh, the Black Cats are trying to... Uh, use their passing game, and uh, that's three or four sacks that they've uh, got on the quarterback, so uh, uh, they just don't have time to uh, to, to make any of the passes. Hey, and Hughes throws it quickly out <laughs> on the right sideline there to Lincoln Sloan, and it went right off his hands. A nice throw there, and I'll tell you what, he had some blockers out there with him. They had three guys wide out wide there, and they were set up. That, that could have been a huge play, and Sloan uh, dropped the ball. Uh, had a flanker screen set up, and uh, and uh, threw the ball out, and it just hit him in a bad spot in the hands. In the hands, right. <laughs> <laughs> a bad spot. Yeah. It was well set up, uh, but it wasn't executed. Third down and 11 now. He's in the shotgun. He's got his receiver split out wide to the left this time. And he rolls to the left. Now rolls back the other way, and he's taken down again. It's Philip Hickman with another sack. I know that's at least two for him tonight. We had a flag down. And let's see what the call is. Holding on the Black Cats. I'm sure that'll probably be declined because he lost about eight yards on the sack. Yes, they'll, de <coughs> they'll decline it and it bring up uh, fourth and what's so that, about, about 18. 18. So... Bird's got to kick it away again. Well, this is one beautiful football facility over here. Yes, it is. <clears throat> There's uh, uh, very few football facilities in the high school ranks in the state, I'm sure, that uh, compared to this uh, facility. And, and uh, we're fortunate enough to be able to come over and, and watch them play on it and, and, uh, and uh, participate in this great facility they have. Use another low kick, takes a bounce, and picked up at the 44 by Corey Chapman, and he finds the seam, gets it down to the 35. He gets popped by Chase Martin, taken down there at the 36. And I'll tell you, we've got, got some uh, fine facilities uh, here in uh, in Pike County, especially with this facility here, Pikeville, of course, with the uh, turf, in uh, Shelby Valley now with this new field turf up there. And, uh, of course, you know, Pike Central and East Ridge, those facilities are great facilities, too. They don't have the field turf yet. Uh, well, I, I think if uh, if I'm not mistaken, somebody told me that they was going to try to get that at Pike Central next year, the field turf. Yeah, so. I, that's what I've been hearing. So hope, hopefully they'll be able to do that. Elkins pitches it back to Epling, and he's taken down for a big loss by Lincoln Sloan. All the way back at the 44-yard line. 43. Loss of about seven or eight yards on the play. Talking about the facilities, uh, <clears throat> Ken, just goes to show you how much uh, high school football has uh, progressed in the mountains in the, in the last few years. Uh, right. Used to, it was all basketball, you know, and it, it, you just played football because that was the season, you know, except right. for a, a few schools. But now everybody's getting bobbed, and, and it's uh, great for the kids. It sure is. And off to Corey Chapman off right tackle, and he gets most of that lost yardage back. It's down to the 38, pick up of about six yards on the play. That puts Chapman over the 100-yard mark to, for tonight, uh, 12 rushes for 106 yards. Still third and long. It'll be third and about 12, maybe these, 13. These Pirates got three good-looking running backs. Oh, they have. They sure have. And a nice-looking sophomore quarterback, too. Yes. He does a great job uh, handling the ball there, and he can throw this, throw the football. He takes the snap, hands it off. There goes Dustin May breaking one, and he gets all the way down inside the 20. West Hall on the tackle. A 19-yard pickup for Dustin May. 
He started those two and three yard runs. He decided he was going to bust one, didn't he? All right. So it's first and ten. Belfry at the 19 now as they're threatening again. That puts May up to 80 yards rushing tonight. And Dustin May takes it off the left side. Not much there this time. Maybe a yard. Second and nine. <coughs> Coach Haywood just keeping that ball on the ground. The clock's ticking off, and uh, it's just a matter of what the final score is going to be now, Chuck, with or uh, Ken, with uh, 6.50 to go in the uh, fourth quarter, and uh, Pirates up 28-3. That's, that's all that remains to be determined. I understand that Dustin May and uh, Corey Chapman are both in the top 20 in the state in rushing. In two-way, that is. And Chapman... Breaks free. He was wrapped up and ready to go down, and somehow he breaks free and takes it in the end zone. 18 yards for the touchdown. And I tell you, Corey Chapman has been virtually impossible to tackle tonight. He's a tough runner. Uh, he doesn't give you much to hit. He's he's always <laughs> moving, uh, uh, twisting and turning, and uh, if you don't wrap him up, he's going to get free. Uh, man, what a run that time. He was wrapped up that time and still <laughs> somehow broke free. I don't know what happened there. He's a little slippery. <laughs> Ernest ready to kick it again. He does, and he's five for five on extra points tonight. It's now 35 to three. And uh, talking about all these fine facilities, uh, Larry. Now, this is a press box here at Belfry. Yes, this it is. is. A, just a wonderful press box. Huge, a lot of room. It's, it's wide and uh, a lot of good seating, but it's uh, really done right. There's a lot of a lot of colleges out there that would love to have a facility like this, I'm sure. A lot and, of small and, colleges. Uh, uh, I'm uh, grateful for it tonight because we're sitting here uh, nice and warm in short sleeves and uh, instead right. of being on top of the press box or something, you know, with the coat <laughs> on. So it's, it's been nice tonight for oh, sure. It's great in here. It's the, just the whole facility is top notch. The school, the, the school, new school, the new school uh, oh, it's all, all, all it's the uh, athletic facilities, the track, baseball, softball fields. It, it's just, uh, oh. it, it's just a wonderful uh, facility and a testament of how the people at the Pike County School Board has worked with the schools and uh, tried to uh, offer the best that they can for the, all the uh, student athletes in Pike County. Yes, they've done done a great job. As Glenn Ernest gets ready to kick it again. He's had a workout tonight. Oh, he has. Five extra points. Now he's kicked off at least six times. Boots it away into the end zone. It's at about the two and rolls out the back of the end zone. So Prestonsburg will take over at their own 20 first and 10 with 629 left in the ball game. You don't see too many uh, kicks uh, in high school in this area uh, go into the end zone. No, you don't. And that, that one's almost there in the air, just as you said, it hit right. on the two-yard line. Right. So that, that's an excellent kick. Young man, the Pockwell's got a good kicker, the Profunda kid, Max Profunda. He can, yes, he can really yes. boot it. He, uh, he'll probably uh, play on the next level somewhere with his leg. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Here's Hughes taking the snap, rolling out to the left, trying to cut back and taking down right at the 20. No gain on the play. Belfry uh, next week there, uh, Larry, I think uh, next Friday night will be at Sheldon Clark. They'll travel down there, and that, uh, that's, uh, that's a heck of a place to play. Sheldon Clark's always been tough at home. and. Uh, I'd like to know how the game's going down there tonight, and Shelby Valley should be a good one. And, uh, well, if, if Sheldon Clark ends up winning that game tonight, uh, and this one uh, is going to be is all Pirates, that's going to be for the district championship. Right, because they, if uh, they could, could beat Belfry, they would win it on the tiebreaker. Each of them would have one loss in the district. And here's a pass out to Lincoln Sloan. He breaks, no, I thought he broke a tackle at the 30, but he finally goes down at about the 34. Nice throw out there by Hughes. That was Philip Hickman on the tackle again. Hickman's had a fine game tonight. So we'll pick up a 14 yards on the pass from Hughes 
to Lincoln Sloan. That's uh, Lincoln's second reception for tonight for a total of 23 yards. Hughes is three for nine uh, uh, in the passing game tonight for a total of 30 yards. <coughs> Hughes takes the snap, pump fakes, got all kinds of time this time, and throws it down the left sideline. He's got Sloan again, and another nice gain out to the 47. 12-yard, 13-yard pickup. It'll be first and 10, Prestonsburg once again. They've moved Sloan out of the backfield, and he was setting up as a wide receiver uh, that time, and, and he was wide open. Just threw it out to him and let him get what he can. <coughs> oh, we just got a score there. Sheldon Clark, 43, Shelby Valley, 6. That's a surprise. So, uh, almost picked off there as uh, number 32 of the Pirates. Had a real shot at Sean it. Sean Huddle. Right in his hands. Right in his hands. That's another bad, bad spot, spot again. again. <laughs> right. Well, boy, I tell you what, that score we just heard, uh, the Shel dominating performance by Sheldon Clark tonight over a, a pretty good Shelby Valley team. So uh, that sets up a big matchup for next Friday. I'll tell you, that's, uh, Sheldon Clark surprised everybody last year getting to that regional championship, going over there and beating a very good Leslie County team. And they've got almost all that team back. They were very young last year. So uh, could be a really good game next Friday. Hughes going deep. Uh, well overthrown, but uh, nowhere to go really back there. Wes Woods, he's trying to go to his tight end, and there was four red shirts around him there. Just no well, they was, at all. They was closer to it than his receiver. Right. And uh, speaking of Sheldon Clark, Coach Sean Hager, he does an excellent job with them. And, and uh, uh, just as you said, it had to, that'd be a tremendous game next week uh, and uh, most likely uh, for the district title. So, uh be a huge crowd over in Inez, Kentucky uh, next Friday night. Absolutely. Here's the snap. Hughes back looking to pass on third and ten. Fires it. Nice throw and hits Woods with it, but Corey Chapman nails him, knocks the ball loose. He got there at the same time the ball and uh, there was no way that that uh, Woods was going to hang on to well, that. there was it. That right. was called you call a separation. Yes. <laughs> That was a beautiful, beautiful pass, and uh, I think I think Woods would have had it had it not been for the great play by Chapman. Fourth and ten now as Belfry going for it, or Prestonsburg going for it on fourth down. Hughes in the shotgun, trips out to the left. He's back, and here comes the rush. Overthrows it, picked off by guess who? Gerald Epling. Epling breaks a tackle at midfield, gets down to 40. The 30, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Another big defensive play by Gerald Epling. So Belfry will take over with 4.36 to play in the game, already up 35-3. to He spot the ball on the 29-yard line, and uh, sure they'll probably keep it on the ground here and keep that clock running. Ken, uh <clears throat> Anytime Eplin tips the ball, he's, he seems to have a big gain. He's had seven rushes for 60 yards, uh, almost a 10-yard uh, per rush average, and then he picks that one off and goes, I'm not sure exactly where he got it, but somewhere around uh, 35, yeah, 40 yards return yeah, on right. that. Yeah, returned in a, Yeah, like I said, a good probably 40 yards. <laughs> <laughs> got a timeout, Belfry Pirates. So with that, we'll take a break. We'll be back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports. Welcome back, fans, uh, on Pond Creek, uh, Kentucky, uh, Belfry Pirates and the Prestonburg Black Cats doing battle tonight. And, Ken, it's been all Pirates, 35-3, 4.36 to go in the fourth quarter. Another great performance by Coach Philip Haywood's Belfry Pirates as they're going to come away with the big district win here. And off to, I believe that's Ivan Lee getting his first carry of the night. Ivan is a... Six foot, 233 pound sophomore. And uh, he's a, a good running back. His time will come here, I'm sure, in the next year or two. It's all down at the 24 yard line. He picked up five yards on the carry. He's a big, strong kid. Yeah, he got behind that offensive line. And they just kept pushing the Black Cats down the field and, and uh, end up getting five yards. And, uh, he, he's uh, it's like you said he's uh, 
he'll get his time, but he's behind three good backs right now. Right, there's number 33 off the right side. That's uh, number Tyler Guzlan. Yeah, Tyler Guzlan. Only a freshman. Ivan Lee was one of the uh, one of the stars of, of the uh, Pike County Bowl on defense uh, against Newport Catholic. Boy, he had a tremendous ball game. Forced a couple of fumbles, recovered a couple, and uh, he, he was tremendous that night, I remember. It just goes to show you uh, what we talked about earlier about Belf or Belfry having such a uh, football program instead of a team uh, that a sophomore can step up and contribute uh, to a right. team as good as they are. And they've got to change a quarterback, too. Here's number seven. And number seven carry. would be Timmy Lovin. And let's see what Greg Lovin's in. He's a 5'9", 129-pound freshman. Another freshman. And the quarterback now is uh, Ryan Preston. Number four, Ryan was the starting uh, quarterback in the uh, opening few games of the season, but uh, since been replaced by Andrew Elkins. He's and, going to have Ryan, a hard time getting Ryan's that starting on, oh, uh, job is. back where Elkins is the player. Ryan's only a junior. So there's a lot of good young players on this Belfry team. And there's Ivan Lee with it. Not much there this time. The clock winding down in a hurry, down to 225 to play in the game. Ball at the 17. In fact, Lee actually lost a yard on that play. Yeah, they're just uh, just running the little dive, you know, just keeping that clock running, trying to move the chain. So uh, this is winding down. Uh, Prestonsburg came in, uh, played a good first quarter, and uh, going to have to go back and regroup and get ready for next week. Yes, they are. Preston takes the snap, hands it off, big hole up the middle, and nice running there down to the one. That's number 23. That's no, that's Heath Varney. Uh, okay. Uh, he is a 5'6", uh, 156-pound junior. Heath Varney picks up a 16 yards on the carry. First and goal for Belfry with a minute 35 to play in the game. The clock running. And, Ken, you know, people will look back, and if they put this one in and say they're running the score up, but they, he's playing his second oh, and third team, and they're just running uh, up the middle, and, and you know, what what else can you do? Yeah, you know? you got, these kids have got to want to play, too. So, good hard run there. It's a touchdown for Heath Varney. He takes it in from one yard out. And it's now 41 to three. <coughs> Glenn Ernest ready to kick his sixth extra point of the night. He's done well tonight. I don't know how what uh, how he is for the season as far as uh, extra points, but he's been true uh, tonight. I think he's pretty well dead on has been for the last couple of years. I've seen several games and he's, he's uh, very dependable on those extra points. As being said here, one of the Prestonsburg players lost a shoe. And he's got an unusual kicking style nowadays. He's a straight on kicker. He's not a sidewinder right. like most of them is. A lot of these kids are now playing soccer and uh, Kick it with that sidewinder motion. I can remember back in the uh, the uh, pros, uh, you know, everybody kicked that way, and they started coming out and kicking it sideways. You thought they was crazy on what they were doing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Garo, your premium of the Dolphins years ago. Here's the kick by Ernest. Straight down the middle. And it's perfect again. So it's now 42 to 3 with only a minute 14 seconds to go in the ball game. And uh, we just keep it right here. Is this one just about over? And what a performance by the Pirates, I'll tell you. Tell you what, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see these Pirates make another serious run at that state championship. 
They won it in uh, 04 and uh, or won the state championship in 03 and 04. And then last year uh, got beat in the state semifinals by Russell and, and could have very easily won that game. Had a, had a late turnover there. Got, got themselves in a hole, got behind the, pretty bad in the first half, had to dig out of the hole, but they did. And uh, if not for a, a turnover late in the game, probably would have pulled that one out. And, and then uh, Russell went on down to Louisville and just uh, destroyed their opponent in the state championship game. I'm sure Belford probably would have done the same and could have had a three-peat there. But uh, they're, they're a serious contender again. They're, they're definitely in the mix. A uh, young team gets better every week. Uh, excellent coaching staff. Uh, Coach Haywood's got together here, and, and it's uh, been proven over the years uh, how successful they are. So... Uh, anybody that uh, thinks that the Pirates is not going to be a contender again this year heard uh, talk, you know, that they was young and this would be the year, you know, would be the chance to, uh, to take to, them down, to dethrone them and stuff. <laughs> but now they're they're not uh, showing any signs of that here tonight or so far this year. No, they're not. And and what what's. Uh, Coach Haywood does just like uh, the last two drives we've seen, uh, which adds a lot of experience to his team. You know, he gets his young players in these games and gives them that game experience. Right. Here's a nice return over the right side. By, couldn't get that number. He's moving too fast for me to see his number. Let's see who gets 30, up off the pile. 32, I believe. Is that Dalton Taylor? 32. It's Dalton Taylor. Good run back there. He took it back near the goal line and gets it out to the 30. I tell you, that's, uh, you talk about what a program they've got here at Belfry and, and the, the continuity in this coaching staff is one of the big reasons. He's got, uh, uh, Coach Haywood's got some guys down here, uh, Anthony Tackett, Todd Castle, and Coach Mickey. They've been with him uh, just about since he's been here. Uh, in fact, some of those boys played for him and then, then came right back as coaches, but they've been around together a long time, and uh, that means a lot. Yeah, that's the familiar faces uh, on the sidelines, and uh, players has confidence in uh the ability of the coaching staff because they've seen what's uh, happened before they've right. come up to high school ranks. So uh, uh, it's, it's just a solid program all around. And he's mixing in some of these young guys now. Casey LaGuire, who was a fine quarterback here uh, for the Pirates a few years ago, helping out now. And uh, Jonathan Wright, the one we talked about that uh, when they, they switched to the passing game when Jonathan was quarterback over here several years ago. But Jonathan also an assistant coach. So a good mixture of uh, youth and experience on this coaching staff. Back to throw is Hughes. Deep down the right side, he's got his man open. Lincoln Sloan, he hits him. One man to beat, and he breaks free. It's a touchdown, Prestonsburg. And that one, 69 yards, or 68. He's, yeah. No, it's, I guess the 31 yard line, so it's 69 yards. 69 yards. Beautiful throw there by Hughes, which we've seen. Uh, uh, Hughes has a, a good arm and can really throw it. He just hasn't had time tonight. Uh, that, that rush has been on him. He's been sacked several times and had to, had to rush his throws. And you see what he's capable of when he's got time to throw it. Yeah, the uh, Pirates playing the uh, uh, two deep guys, uh, second string, and uh, give him time, and uh, he laid it out uh, right in uh, stride for Sloan and, and uh the one defender that, that had a chance at him just couldn't bring him down. And here's Moore kicking up the extra point. It's good. And it's now 42 to 10. And that's touchdown comes with 10 seconds to go in the ball game. So it was a beautiful play. That makes huge tonight. He's six for 15. In the passing game for uh, the Black Cats uh, and the 115 yards. Prestonsburg will be kicking off now for one last time here. Only 10 seconds remaining in the ball game. Hard to believe, Larry, but we're just uh, about uh, four weeks from tonight. We'll be covering playoff games. There are three weeks left in the regular season. After tonight. It comes up quick. Uh, the season seems like uh, flies by. Uh, uh, about the time you get into a good groove and, and see some good games, it seems like it's all over, doesn't it? Right.
we've got some teams in uh, Eastern Kentucky that's got a chance to go a long ways. Not only uh, the uh, Belfry Pirates, uh, you know, Pikeville has uh, got an excellent team. Uh, you oh, got yes, some teams over in the uh, 14th region that uh, uh, you got Clay County, Lesson County, and some of those. You always got Bell County and Bell and, Rock. and all of those are yeah. Rock Castle, yeah. Oh, another big game going on tonight in the mountains is uh, Breathitt County at Leslie County. That should be uh, quite a match up there. That'll probably determine a district winner over there tonight. Yes, the onside kick comes up short, so Belfry will have it at the 49. They just have to take a knee, and, and it'll be over. 5.8 seconds remaining on the clock. But yeah, those, uh, I tell you, the Panthers... Uh, Iowa Panthers have lost, I think, lost four games this year, three or four, but they played a really tough schedule, tough schedule and lost yeah. to great teams, like including this Belfry team, Lexington, Henry Clay, of course, and East Jessamine. But, uh, boy, I tell you, they've got a lot of talent there. They've got, got some uh, players banged up right now, some injuries, and hopefully they can get everybody back by playoff time. Uh, Casey Rose uh, got a, had a little knee problem there, and hopefully he's going to be all right. Ted Honaker separated shoulder, and uh, we hope to see Ted back out there soon, but uh, Bachman could make a serious run in the playoffs. Yes, it could. And that's the ball game as it was a good night for the Belfry Pirates. They win it 42-10 to 10 over the Prestonsburg Black Cats as uh, Belfry remains undefeated in the district. And Looks like they're headed for another district championship and uh, unless they stumble next week at Sheldon Clark. We got the score earlier there. Sheldon Clark up big on Shelby Valley. I think it was 40, 42 to 6 or something, but uh, quite a performance for them tonight. You yes, got a sir. few numbers there you want to give us before we sign off? As, uh, well, uh, I've got some individual stats I can give you uh, for the uh, winning uh, Belfry Pirates, uh, Chapman, uh, 13 carries for 124 yards, uh, had uh, two catches for 29 yards and a TD. Uh, the big touchdown maker tonight was uh, uh, Ken was Eplin. He has seven rushes for 60 yards, uh, two rushing touchdowns, one catch for 30 yards on a receiving uh, touchdown. Uh, May uh, had 23 carries for 81 yards. Uh, uh, Elkins uh, run the offense uh, excellent tonight. He was six for nine for 81 yards uh, uh, through the air for uh, the uh, Black Cats. Uh, they was led tonight by uh, Hughes with eight carries for uh, 34 yards on the gain. Uh, Sloan uh, in the passing game was, was had five catches for 108 yards. So until that last uh, what was 68 or nine 68. yard uh, pass. Right. Uh, Prestonsburg was under 100 yards total for the game. So uh, just a dominating performance tonight by the Belfry Pirates and uh, uh, not only on uh, defense, also offensively. So uh, uh, I'm sure that Coach Haywood is uh, satisfied the way they played and uh, Coach Drossett, uh, I'm, he'll go back and uh, get these uh, players prepared for next week. And uh, you're not, that's, you've not seen the last of them because uh, they're still right in the mix of things for the playoffs and, and Right. Depends on how things goes next week. Uh, Sheldon Clark and and uh, uh, Belfry, Belfry there, you know, they could be uh, end up in a three-way tie if uh, Prestonsburg and, uh, right. where where and Sheldon did Clark and Belfry Sheldon all Clark. won uh, loss. So, uh, right. you know, it's not, over. So yeah. it, it's not over. It's not over. You made a good point there, Larry. Well, we're glad you joined us here once again for exciting high school football. Hope you'll stay with us throughout the season and through the playoffs. We'll be following our local teams as far as they can go. And, uh, Larry, it's our first time working together. It's been a pleasure. Glad you've joined the team here. We've, we've really enjoyed having you along. Well, I've enjoyed it. I've called you everybody that's uh, worked uh, yeah, uh, down kindly. tonight, but I think uh, that I kindly got, uh, got you down. I, I learned who I was with there oh, by the end of the game. Right, about, about the last <laughs> minute and a half of the game. There. You yeah. figured out I wasn't Chuck and I wasn't Charlie. That's well, you know, it's that. better late than never. That's right. At least you got it figured out. <laughs> that's it. And uh, that's, that's going to wrap us up here tonight. So congratulations to Philip Haywood and the Belfry Pirates as they win it big over Prestonsburg, 42-10. to 10. That's going to wrap us up for Jerry Scott back at the radio station, for Shane Murray on camera, for Larry Cecil, Larry the TV guy. This is Ken Hall saying thank you and good night.